All right. Hey, buddy. Yo, what up, man? So I am here with my good friend, Danny Thomas. He came from down from the mountains of Humboldt County, California, to talk to us about... What do you want to talk... What do you... How How you feeling today, buddy? I'm great, man. I uh, was really tired. I had a red, red eye flying in last night. So I left my house in Humboldt at 6.30 yesterday in the morning, and we got to the airport... Around two or three, my flight didn't leave till ten p.m. So and it's like, wait, it's it's more than t- six, eight hours to the airport. It's a six-hour drive to San Fran, and then I had to get dropped off early. And then um, my flight left at ten p.m. and then we landed at six a.m. this morning. So I had a red eye and I didn't really sleep at all. So just feeling a little sleepy, but uh, I'm happy to be back in Jersey, man. I'm happy to be, you know, be here with, with my friends and family, dude. It's it's always great seeing everybody. How uh, how often do you get to come back and visit? Maybe two or three times a year. So this yeah. is this is one of the big. How does it feel? How does it feel coming back to the whole hometown? Because this is, we we come from a place for people that don't know. Because my my Instagram is a little bigger. Uh, mm-hmm. We come from a small town called Fitzgrove. Uh, it's it's New Jersey and it's farm New Jersey. It for sure. It's definitely small town. When something happens here, you hear about it from whether you're in Humboldt County, California, or on the other side of the world, you know, it's like very small town. So, so how's it coming back to, to a really, really tight knit community where, where everybody's always intertwined, I guess. Yeah. It's always nice, man. It's always great seeing everybody. And, uh, my friends, they're all like getting married and having kids, and you know I'm just out there growing weed. Uh, but <laughs> it's always cool, man, coming back and seeing people that you know maybe they bought a house or maybe they had a kid or got married. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, it's, it's weird being away for so long and then coming back and kind of jutting back into their life, you know, and then you just kind of get a small window into what their what their actual daily life is, you know. That's definitely. It's definitely how it is when you when you're gone. You know, you see people. Even I, I, you know, I'm 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 local and I'm still busy in my own way. So when I see people, it's like I'm I'm telling them whole months of things that have happened to me yeah. now, and and you for you forget that you're explaining like well, I I it might even be different for you because you're not talking to like anybody. Yeah, man. And that's the other thing too. Like when you don't talk to somebody for a while. Yeah, you you can't get the full story out because you don't remember all of it. You know what I mean? Because it's uh-huh. been so long. So wow. You know so I mean? so you don't even know like for yourself like what really happened to you when yeah. you're telling a story. <laughs> I always tell a story, you know, a crazy story or something, and then be like, man, I forgot this part or whatever. You know what I mean? Just because it was so long ago or whatever. You know, I don't really get to tell it much. You know, I don't know if you knew Dave Adams, but he was out there. For yeah, me. he was out yeah. there. Yeah, like how four was miles with me? How was Dave? We were, I mean, we're, we're best of friends, man. We yeah. get along real good, you know. Um, it was cool living with him, you know what I mean? Uh, it's always, it's always a, I wouldn't say struggle, but it's always like you have to find your ways when you live with somebody you're not used to living with, you know what I mean? But um, uh, it, was, yeah. it was really cool, man. We, uh, you know, we were just out there working every day, man. No, you know, no days off, seven days a week, 14, 16 hour days. That's how it is in any kind of self employment, really. For sure, you, you, dude. Like, you get easier days. You wake up and there's days where you're like, "Oh, I only have to do this and this," but, but there's a, there's never a day where there's not something you could have crossed off. That's why there's a big list of crap behind yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, so what what made you decide like I'm gonna pack my shit and I'm gonna start growing pot in Humboldt County, California? What was your driving factor behind this being your destiny? Okay, so. I didn't start smoking marijuana until after high school when I went to college. My 20th birthday, I smoked for the first time. Probably the better time to start. It, yeah, I agree with the same thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for sure. Um, I started real young, and I, I probably shouldn't have, but I'm not one for listening to other people anyway. Yeah, so, um, But I, it's probably better to start way later. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So i enjoyed smoking marijuana you know ever since i tried it the first time and uh it was something that got along well with me you know what i mean and uh, and i was able to look at things differently or maybe think of things a different way or something and then um i wouldn't i mean i'll tell you straight up i wouldn't have been able to go out there without 
my mom passing away because she left me some money that I was able to invest with. No, that's why I was able to start, you know, yeah. my own company. It's 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 uh it's ironic that we're in like a similar kind of situation, but uh a friend of mine that I was actually recording a song with the other day, uh he 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 said something to me that was like, you know, at least your parents know that they didn't leave shit to somebody that treated it like shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it really made me feel good just knowing that, like, I'm doing something that probably would have made them proud. And I'm, you know, and you're yeah. definitely, without a doubt, waking up every day and doing the same thing. Oh, no doubt about that, man. For sure, for sure. And whether you look at it as, like, oh, you're out there, just out there growing weed or you're looking at it as, like, a good thing, you know what I mean? It's still, um, it's still, it doesn't discredit any of the work that you're doing. So, you know what I mean? Like, my stepdad might not agree with what I'm doing or whatever, but yeah. it's not up to him. You know what yeah. I mean? And and I think if the, if he was out there every day or my mom was out there every day to see what I was doing and to see the work we were putting in and mm-hmm. to see the potential there too, I think she would be proud of me like you were saying. You know? No, there's a, there's a lot of honor in, like, it, it's weird coming from, like, a country that has, like, like whiskey like jack daniels is a globally recognized brand like it's a brand that i bring up when people talk about like marijuana stocks and stuff like Mar- like jack daniels trades at like 54 dollars a share and you can only imagine that american marijuana can get there if it's legalized one day yeah. and i don't i don't understand why we can't tax it and use it to build schools and and, and use it use practical uh practical regulation again like how we were saying it's better to, it's the only to, way to do it man it, it's it again i could get weed from from a kid that i was going to high school with when i was 12 if it's behind a counter i can't get a pack couldn't get a pack of cigarettes until i was 18 without yeah. without someone with an id yeah like everybody that grew up recently knows how difficult it is just because of getting carded mm-hmm. and i think that that is a big enough deterrent i mean sure there's always going to be that kid that grabs mom and dad's stash yeah but I, I don't know if you're ever going to really be able to fight that. Yeah, I mean, I hear it's like, like you said, the best the best thing you can do is regulate it because then you know where it's coming from. You can trace it back if something happens. You know everything's been tested. You know what I mean? You know everything is organic. Whatever the, whatever the heck you want. Standard deviations, there, you, know, you know. Yeah. I mean? You can trace it back to wherever it is. You know what I mean? And, uh, and at that point, you're not giving your money into other illegal things because, mo- you know, I won't say most weed dealers, but I'll say some weed dealers don't no. just deal weed. No, you know, definitely. They got guns and they got other drugs. So when you're giving them money for your weed, just because it's illegal, it might not be a bad thing, but just because it's illegal, it might go to those other things that they yeah, also do. Yeah, so. it's, it's a bread and butter kind of market. You know, it, just because when something's illegal, they'll, they'll sell it regardless as long as it's selling. You know, when it's regulated, all of a sudden it's just not in a criminal market anymore. Yeah. Like, like the the Jersey board, the New Jersey boardwalk was basically funded by illegal alcohol. And then when alcohol became legal, it just took off in the same way. I you could definitely, that's really what I think New Jersey has to benefit from legalization in our state in particular is the Jersey Shore is in a pretty shitty state and. Mm-hmm. It, it would be fun. It would be really cool to just see every shop selling bongs now. That would be cool, yeah. To just be like, you know, or to be able to go to like a little pot coffee shop instead of like a little bar on the beach. Like, I, I think that's the kind of thing that brings yeah. people back to the Jersey Shore. Yeah, for sure. You would see, I mean, you wouldn't see as many fights too, you know what I mean? It's and that. Casinos, or, I mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I always used to go to Wildwood and. Wow, it's just nuts, you know what I mean? And the yeah, it is. is probably due to the alcohol consumption, you know what I mean? And, but, uh, and and you're not even allowed to drink publicly in Wildwood, you know? It's yeah. it's super regulated, there's cops there, and everybody's just wasted anyway. Yeah. I mean, it, you live in California, it's just different, man. It's different culture. Everybody mm-hmm. out there is like, they don't give a fuck. It's That's like... So, I, it sounds it, nice. Sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to... No, you can curse. <laughs> I've, you can curse, yeah. Cool. Um, but, uh... It's just different out there. I mean, you don't have anybody out there that are still caught in their old ways. You know what I mean? That are still, that are still not thinking about like, oh, well, maybe, maybe it's not really this anymore. Maybe it's not really. They they just want to get high. It's like, well, it's so it's so far past all that, man. Yeah, it really is. You know, and and it, it's a shame, dude. It's just I feel, I come back home and I feel sorry for for people yeah. that have to do illegal things to get. 
to get medicine and it, it sucks man it sucks for y'all man it definitely sure. it definitely is it doesn't really make sense especially when the medical argument comes into play like everybody just kind of falls short and doesn't really have a response to it mm. especially when you consider like cocaine is scheduled two, and it can be prescribed for medical usage and has been prescribed for medical usage amphetamines are prescribed regularly yeah. opioids are Kids. prescribed regularly yeah Fuck. Kid, kids get opioids too if they break their arm. You know, well, maybe not, maybe not so much anymore because of recent, like, in the last two years, legal activity. But for a long time, I've been for. Well, I got a tooth extracted, so that's kind of. I, I wasn't gonna take the Percocets that I got though when when my tooth was extracted, and I did I did actually because it hurt it hurt mm-hmm. like a motherfucker. But mm-hmm. but like. The, there's definitely uses for drugs. I'm I'm a firm believer in drugs have very recreation recreational uses are fine and medicinal uses are also fine Mm -hmm. and who's to say like if if smoking a joint with your therapist is what it takes for you to unwind with your therapist and have like a real heart-to-heart connection with them i i don't really see why that's a problem no and and it and it it stretches into other uh, into other drugs too i i'm a firm believer in things being used properly and then they can be used, you know, improperly. And that's that's when you see addiction come into play. Abusing, and, yeah. Yeah, definitely mm-hmm. abusing. Alcohol is is probably the most abused drug in the country, and it's the legal one. And it's the most accepted. Yeah, you know, that, for sure. That's, that's, I think that's why it's so abused. Yeah, it's, it's, hand in hand. It's accepted to be like, oh, he just got a DUI because he was just, like, shit-faced. But, like... If he was just fucked up on, like, you know, a Xanax, people would be like, oh, shit, he might have a real problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and the fact is, both of them could have just as easily caused an, a car accident. And the real problem is driving wi- on fucking drugs. Yeah. It's not really either of the drugs. And that that's what people, like, it, it's like, you know, blaming video games for shootings, which is something that I, I don't really see any kind of correlation between either i mean real life and video games are so different i mean how could you even yeah yeah them? yeah it's it's like cartoon violence and and it's and like it's not like people were so peaceful before uh before video games you're fine yeah it's not like people were so quiet before video games you know what i mean mm-hmm. uh, you can like that whenever you want though sweet yeah light it up, light it up. Woof, woof. I think this is the second time we're smoking on air, which is <laughs> which is cool. This is cool, fun. Man. I'm about it. So is this is this from Humboldt? Nah, I wish. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I can't bring anything back. I I I'd figured I was just worth asking. Yeah, you man. Know. I wish it was. Um, man. There's some fire out there, boy. There's some fire out there in them hills, man. <laughs> How does it feel, uh, like cutting down your own plant and like? Like like man and nature fucking and then rolling it up and lighting it up together, you know. Hey. How how does that like really feel? Like like is it like like a pot lumberjack up in the mountains type of shit? It is super rewarding. <laughs> like it really is, man. Like when you start something from a seed and you grow something to be like nine feet tall or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you, and then you get all this product off of it, you get all this bud that you can sell. It's so rewarding, man. It really is. It's it's it's, it's a lot of hard work and it's just seems like it's endless sometimes but it's so worth it at the end of the year man when everything's hanging when everything's jar- you know you're clipping your buds and you're, you're jarring everything up and then you end up making a little bit of money man it's so worth it man no i mean that's definitely it it, it seems to me like the again like like i was talking about how america is so big with like whiskey manufacturers and beer manufacturers like it even more so like there's a science behind that like this is really like putting a seed in the ground and turning it into something something you know beautiful and every plant's going to be different too so you know you've got that one plant probably that you've been watching (laughs) since we got a couple of them um and and that's the thing when you go when you get industrialized everything starts to become the same size you know what i mean everything starts to look real real like the same and everything like that so it's uh right now we got we got big plants next to small plants and you know skinny plants next to fat plants and 
and all this mix up, but um, it's just a thing of beauty, man. Especially right now, they just started flowering. Now we got about fifty percent of our of our plants. We have over six hundred plants. We have six hundred twenty-eight plants. Six hundred twenty-eight uh, plants. Yeah, in fifteen thousand three hundred. So, <laughs> how much does that yield? Well, anticipation. Six hundred twenty-eight. Well, plants. okay. So I put it this way. You know, we're still on our learning curve. We're still trying to get everything down, trial and error period. But um, absolutely, you the know. lady that sold us the property, <laughs> she was there for twenty years doing it illegal, right? And um, inspiring, dude, amazing. She, she you know, that, that's 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 a true sport. Again, like I, I was watching an interview with a guy that got busted. I think he was manufacturing MDMA, and uh, he was like real depressed because he's just living in near Humboldt County, just growing bud kind of now. And he's not making as much money as he did before and blah, 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 blah. And the guy was like, don't you think like, you know, you, you were kind of just like an anarchist, like rebelling against the government that was wrong in the first place. And he, it, you could just see the look in his eyes that he'd never really thought like he might be in the right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's definitely, uh, that woman was definitely in the right, beyond a reasonable doubt. You yeah, know what I mean? And she made it, too. That's the coolest thing. She made it through, man. You know, she was getting hot at the end, and that's why she sold the property. Wow. She was getting notices and stuff from the government. But, but dude, she Shady. did it for 20 years, man. And she had she said her best year was 500 pounds. And you're talking 15,300 square feet of four different gardens. You know, um, just amazing. But, you know, like I said, we're... We're still in that trial and error period. We're still in that see what works thing. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Seeing what strains work for the best for us or, or whatever. You know what I mean? Seeing what schedules do with, with nutrient feeding or watering even or, right. or trimming or, or how early we start our plants, where we start our plants. You know what, what is mean? the name of your company for the people that are on here? Well, we had uh, – it was Little Buddy Patient Group. Now okay, it's that's just, the one uh, I remember. Okay, yeah. Now it's just HIM management. We have we have Every time you change your name, you have to pay. Yeah, yeah, it's like okay. $2,000. So at this point, we're just like, you know, let's just make some money and then we'll worry about the name later. But uh, yeah, 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 it's pretty cool, man. You know, um, I like the little buddy thing, you know, but uh, it was something to do with like taxes and we had to get rid of that old name and stuff like that. So, okay, yeah, man, it's cool. We, um, it's just hella work, dude. Hella work. We got 40, 46 acres out there. So, you know, we got, we got the uh, river that runs through the property. The Van Dusen River. Van Dusen River. That's that's a cool name. It's definitely a cool spot. We're at like 2,400 feet elevation. Oh wow! So um, it's pretty wild. We get we get a good amount of snow, but like it's you'll get snow. Is there snow you're... on the top of the mountain? Yeah. We, yeah. yeah snow yeah, capped mountain. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. The, I remember I was in Germany the first time I saw a mountain snow capped. It's it's really it's really a really interesting thing when like. Cause it's just it, you just see the cloud and everything just landing on it too, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Continue. It looks like, and it kind of looks like clouds too when you're far, far away. You yeah. Know what I mean? But um, we got Shasta Mountain that's like two hours away from us, uh -huh. <laughs> and that's that stays uh, snow covered, I believe, all year throughout the whole year. It'll be snow. It'll wow. Be snow yeah. But um, right now we have like, there's a marine layer that comes off the ocean, mm -hmm. and um. That's why the redwoods are actually able to live there because they get their water through the dry season, through the mist from the marine layer that comes off the ocean, like I was saying. And then, so we have like this big wall of mountains right there, and it just, you can see the fog. It just rolls over the mountains like a freaking bed sheet or something, dude. It's nuts. That's, yeah. that, see, mountains, I think they're the best, the, my favorite personal view of nature. Like, sunsets and mountains, I think, are the coolest things to look at in nature. I like the I like mountains better than I think the ocean. Like most people would probably say the ocean, but like I I don't know. I like a good mountain. You know, I yeah. like the brisk, cold kind of. It's cool for sure, man. Yeah, is it yeah. cold? Is it cold up there, or is yeah, it, we, it? It's I mean, it's California, so it's on and off probably. Yeah, it um it gets cold in the winter. We get it'll get down to thirty thirty five degrees, and we'll get snow. You know, we'll get a foot or two of snow, but um, in the summertime it'll only get up to maybe ninety five degrees, but it's never humid. You know what I mean, and then it's a so, dry heat. Yeah, yeah, that's what they say about California. Yeah, it's a so different talking, kind of heat. So you're talking like eleven o'clock to two, three, or four o'clock. It's like, you know, it's hot. It's the middle of the day period. But then, you know, seven, eight, nine o'clock rolls around. Ten o'clock rolls around. It's fifty degrees outside. Yeah. So it drops yeah. dramatically. It drops like you know forty, forty-five degrees sometimes. 
and uh, we just try to, we don't have any air conditioning or anything because we're totally off the grid. Oh wow, really? Yeah. Completely off the grid. That's off awesome. The grid. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's got to be fucking cool. Yeah, we got solar panels, battery packs. We got we're all hooked up to the generator. We got propane refrigerator. Have you ever run out of power by any, any? Yeah, how bad? How bad was that? It's not bad because it's not like when you lose power when you're hooked up to the street. You can just start your Jenny, and you got power right away. You're, oh. you're already hooked up and shit. So, so it's awesome. So okay, you're just. You know, it's like a be prepared type thing. Again, it's like super camping. You yeah, know? exactly. It, you know, I mean, yeah, definitely. Uh, our dryer runs off propane. You know, that's like I crazy. said, we don't have air conditioning. You know, so you just got to tough it out, kind of. But um, you get used to it. It's not humid, so it's not as bad. How bad is it? Is the cold? How bad is the heat in the cold? We got a wood stove, which is cool. I love it. Wood stoves are nice. Oh, there's, they're a, awesome. there, there's, there's. There's a guy in Vineland actually that still makes like iron cast iron really? wood stoves. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Again, that's how this 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 area. There's still a guy that makes wood stoves here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, they are the shit out there, dude. I mean, that, that's you know that's I, something we gotta start doing out there. Is start getting our wood ready for the winter, you know. But um, now what what kind of like, trees do you cut down usually? <clears throat> well, we try and we try and thin the firs out out there because. Okay. Apparently they're I'm not, I'm not real big on like you know the biology of trees and all that stuff but apparently the firs are strangling out all of the oaks and like all of the the meadowy hillsides and stuff like that are just going away because the firs are just taking over everything. So when we do cut trees down, you need to cut firs down. But uh I mean yeah, there's there's always every area has like their natural they're natural like you, this is what you're supposed to hunt this is what you're supposed to cut down and yeah. and going beyond that again like some areas need stuff like that like there's there's certain species that are just so bad that they'll rip they'll destroy everything around them if you don't kill it mm -hmm. yes yeah, it's, it's just invasive man very invasive species we got we're getting snakeheads around here and all the lakes and stuff like that snakeheads are bad they're bad man yeah they're coming they came all the way up from florida and uh when, if you catch one out here, you're supposed to kill it. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. That's what they. That's what they say. Because yeah. like, you know, you just walk by the lake, and there's always some old guy that's just talking about something. <laughs> yeah, always. <laughs> you know, dude, we live right down the uh, the road from Bassmaster Classic champion Mike Iaconelli. I don't know. If, did you yeah, know that? Yeah, we. Yeah. yeah, everybody, everybody knows that. I mean, <laughs> everybody knows that shit. Ex except the internet, because it's <clears throat> we're not supposed to talk about the lake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, but everybody around here does like Pat. Pat has a fishing channel. Actually. Pat Murphy, yeah, yeah, no. yeah, and he talks about that lake being there and lake. Yeah, yeah I don't even want to call it. I don't even want yeah. to say it. But yeah, yeah, the name of the lake that's in this town. <laughs> one of the one of the ones that because like like the lake that was by Anderson's like is completely Centerton. Centerton Lake is like a it's like a swamp. It's like a drain. It's like a it's like a stream now. Yeah, right? the, the dam broke. We kayaked back there like two right. years ago, like all the way through the woods. We didn't know where we were gonna end up or anything. We just went through the woods and ended <laughs> up there, and it's like three feet of water and just banked behind like these nice houses that used to have like lakefront property. That yeah, you, the Cavanaughs used to live back there, and uh, and it was lakefront. Yeah, I, and, it, and I bet you it's not now. Which it's sucks, definitely man. not. Yeah. You definitely cannot. You you definitely are looking at like trees growing in the center of what was a lake. And like, it was some crazy shit that the that the township came to them and said like, y'all need to fix the dam. We're not fixing it. So if y'all want to have a lake again, you gotta pay to fix the dam. And I thought that was nuts, dude. That is nuts. What kind of shit is that? That is, that is nuts. Is it privately owned? That might be why. I don't know. Might, I guess so. Like, because if it like Palatine, I think is a public lake. So I, I see. I don't. It, it, I, there's. I was kicked off of there one time. So maybe it's not then. Maybe it's not a public lake. But people fish there all the fucking times. Yeah, I know. But because I thought you can't own a. Someone told me before that you can't own a body of water in New Jersey, property wise. But you can own the land underneath it, which is like. What the fuck does that mean? There, there is private lakes. So the people in Palatine, they pay for that lake. Yeah. And so that's that, why it's private. Yeah. Um, but public lakes, you're not allowed to own water. Like if somebody, yeah. if if you're 
like m- being a bass fisherman, mm-hmm. you fish docks because it's structured. Bass, sit, you know, they sit on structure, so okay, they might be under docks or whatever that day. So you could be fishing right up on a dock, and um, if somebody starts yelling at you, like "Yo, get away from my dock," they're not allowed to do that. It's public property. It's it's water. No, but you're not allowed to own the water. You can own your dock, mm-hmm. but as long as I'm not on your dock or you yeah, know, you can fish around it. Yeah. And getting hit in your boat with my weights and stuff like that. You know, if you're allowed, they're, they're not allowed to tell you. And there's a guy out there in Rainbow Lake who has signs out in his, in his yard. It says, like, <laughs> please stay back 50 feet. Or it says, stay back 50 feet. And then I was out there one time fishing close to it, and he got all pissed at me. He's like, yeah, you better get the fuck out of here, this and that. It's just like, dude, it's fishing. Like, he definitely, you, yeah. You know, there's so much. Oh, it's just it's crazy to me. No, he's definitely banking on the fact that nobody everybody's going to just run away because he's yelling at them. You yeah. know what I mean? Like he's expecting most people to not not want to <laughs> not be ready to argue with him. Yeah. There's but, so many YouTube videos out there, man, of just people, you know, like yeah. fishing private marinas and stuff and people like that own the marina, they'll come and be like, "Yo, you know, you're not allowed to be here. This is a private marina. We built this, and you, well, it's law. Like you can call the cops if you want, but I'm yeah. not going anywhere because I can fish this. You know, and and it's it's the same thing with like skateboarders too, like with public property, like and and anybody that's ever ridden anything, like they, it's just the whole private and public property thing is so stupid to me. Like f- telling some kid that they can't ride on a rail, you know that kid's not gonna like. I'm sure some asshole kid sued somebody before and somebody, you know, got got fucked over because of the, some kid's mom. But for the most part, I knew if I fell somewhere, my mom wasn't doing shit about it. Yeah. You know I mean, what I mean? Yeah, just rub some fucking dirt on it. Yeah, you know I mean? exactly. Like, damn. It's, you know, it's exactly how it is. It You just... And the fish thing, it's like it's like they want like it's like they're their fish, you know, like <laughs> like like I own I own those fish that are just grazing on the fucking sh- the side of my fucking dock. Like, get get the fuck away from from these bass that I can't count nor fucking keep track of. Oh man, that shit's funny. So you've been doing doing your music thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Awesome, so man. the the music thing's been fun. Uh. I, it, it, really the town, the, to my talented, the talented person I work with is my friend John. He was, uh, the best guitar player I knew when we were like 16. And he got in a car accident and got paralyzed from the neck down. Wow. And now he's, he's quadriplegic, but, uh, he's got partial movement in his arms. Uh, and he couldn't play guitar, obviously. And, he just started making beats and stuff and i i never really thought i was ever gonna like make music or anything like that uh but when my mom died i just got real emotional and i just wrote like five songs and ended up recording them with john and another friend of mine nate and then john john started the nj music scene facebook page which has like seven eight thousand followers and it, it's how a lot of people around here book shows, and it's how we've been booking shows. So we've been managing to find something to do for the next month. We're doing, we have one show, I think it's the end of August, and then another show, the beginning of October, for uh, abuse victims. Where, uh, at? Where are these shows at? Uh, the first one is located, at, I can pull up the address. One of them's a house show, and the other one... Uh, it the the location hasn't actually been announced to even me yet. Oh, okay, cool. But uh, you know, it's it, it again. It's the local thing, and the people are so cool. Like it, it it's really, they like the people that come out to these things really are like the nicest, the nicest people. Like they're just a lot of them are just friends of bands that are just coming to see people for the first time, and it, it it's really a cool community. And again, I I like working with people like that aren't just doing like rap or like like whatever the hell you want to call what I do mm-hmm. like like I was uh, going to ask you what would you what would you say it is you would you just say it's rap or would you say it's a certain genre of rap I guess I guess it's like a certain genre of rap it's like a really slow kind of trippy rap yeah. you know like I don't I don't know I don't know what I what I'm doing I, it's definitely rap because I don't do anything besides say some words you know what I mean yeah, yeah. 
Like it's definitely just poet poetry at my end. And then John's the talented one because he 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 I, I'm learning engineering and stuff like that, but John can put together anything. And that's, and that's dope that he you know he's the one that that got paralyzed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's awesome for him dude that he like st- like stuck with his passion and, and like may- he might not be able to play the guitar anymore but yeah he still is like dealing out music that's awesome dude it, exactly awesome. It, it like again people again people like see me and i his saga genesis he's on like every song that i've like almost every song that i've done and and people like and People don't realize it until because he doesn't tell anybody he's quadriplegic until they meet him in person because mm-hmm. he's I don't know, you know, it's just not the kind of thing you just I guess say. Yeah. And it, it's like their reaction is is always pretty cool too, and he he's always you know any show that he can get into will do. We've done little shows in coffee shops. We've done we've played a show in a church one time, which was really really different we weren't expecting to, any, to ever do anything like that yeah but that's what it's all about though man yeah you know, getting out of your comfort zone and doing and doing things like that man that's awesome yeah i definitely it definitely got me out of my comfort zone because all, all i do is write and i've always kind of written poetry like i mean i write i primarily i guess not anymore but i was originally just writing like children's fiction and then i failed writing children's fiction so i wrote like a really adult r-rated movie and then i almost finished this movie with a girl that i was working with named maxine ironically and uh the movie fell through it was like eight scenes from being finished the funding was out we lost like everything it sucked and i just i just started writing this other book and you know it, it you just keep if you fail a million times, you know, the, the, the billion, all you have to do is make it that one time. Man, preach. Hey, listen to this man. <laughs> listen to this man right now. You know, that that's... I say that all the time, man. Yeah. I say that all the time. It's going to take you so many times to fail, man, to, to just succeed that one time to make it count, you know. And that's what it's all about, man. Look at the most successful people. But man, I mean, how many businesses, did, you know what I mean, that certain people have and then it's just like... You just gotta have that one that makes it. Is all you need. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It. You. You just. I. I don't know. I've. I, if anything, I've learned it's that failure is not not something to be ashamed of. That's that's the one. My biggest issue with like school is like the worst thing that ever happens to anybody is they failed. You know what I mean? And and in real life, I couldn't see that as like more the opposite of how things really are, because like. When I lo- like I lost that that movie and I lost money that I put into that movie and I lost a lot of work and time and but I learned a lot. Yeah. I learned I learned about directing, I learned about filming, I learned about working with different kinds of people. It's all ex- experience, man. You yeah. Get the experience. It, it's about building building a skill set, you know, mm-hmm. and and like I think of it like a constellation kind of and like everything that you learn is like a little star and like every when it's done you have like this big picture that's just like what the fuck you can do you know and everybody can do different things and you can just you if you want to learn something you can learn it like that's i base my my goals on like you could probably learn that you could probably do that you know it's doable man you just got to put your mind to things man for sure i mean you're you're, yeah sorry no man it's all good but like I think I forget I forget where I heard it from. Man, I forget <laughs> how long it was, but I think it was like either something to do with like if you do something every day for two years, it was either like two or six years or whatever it was. It's the ten thousand hour rule. It yeah, seems like, like yeah, you do something straight for two years and you try your best at it. You're gonna be perfect at it in two years. Yeah, it you de- you de- it's exactly that. You just grind at it. Yeah, it's if it's skateboarding, if it's you want to grow yeah, pot, yeah, yeah. if you wanna if you wanna get good at talking to people uh, you know obviously it's uh it varies for some things you know what i mean well, you, yeah you pot- can't become a pro football player in two years if you're 35 well that's <laughs> that's but the, like, yeah skill sets you know. change but you can learn okay. about football at the age of 35 you yeah. can be like you can be the best pro fantasy football player yeah. at yeah. The, you know you can you can change your route and that's what life is about it's about switching your flight like 
like that that's how i that's what i learned from the movie because i i was rejected as a as a writer and then i was like oh i'll just i'll write a movie and then the movie fell and then i'll just all right i'll try this again and that that's you know it's skills are interchangeable and the best skills apply to different things i mean you you could end your career growing strawberries in a laboratory for all you know (laughs) you know yeah just just because you you know you figured out a different way Mm mm-hmm yeah, for sure. My cousin's actually calling me right now. Yeah, no problem. Mind if I pick it up real quick? Yeah, you're good. Yo. How is everybody? So, I will just talk for a couple seconds while Danny is on the phone real quick. Let's see what's the number one news story in the world right now. Ice raids sweep 800 undocumented immigrants across Mississippi. That is very dark. I'm going to go to an entertainment story. Woody Harrelson once had to escape a brutal dinner with Donald Trump by going outside to smoke weed. Woody Harrelson is a really cool guy. I um, I watched an interview with him not too long ago because he was involved in an industrial hemp growing. Uh, I guess it's his company or he was just promoting for it. But I think industrial hemp is a very interesting and and very practical field because the fact that we cut down trees for paper is kind of insane to me i mean i i'm as a publisher i guess that's my title now uh am shopping around for actual book titles and the way that book titles work is it might actually be cheaper to not go a green route but i could never not use recycled materials it it doesn't even make sense to me that they wouldn't be cheaper but but if that's the case industrial hemp is the only uh practical concept but i i stumbled on a good topic while you stepped out Go for it. Uh, woody harrelson is an actor um he said he left a dinner to with donald trump to smoke weed one time and it's the number one news story but uh <laughs> Uh, industrial hemp uh, so what are your thoughts on the whole industrial hemp side of it because it's not talked about a lot I think in media because everybody's always focused on being stoned yeah. uh, but I think it might actually be the more <clears throat> even more practical than than recreational hemp yeah uh, yeah, so when you say hemp, do you mean like CBD products, or do you mean this? This the actual this hemp is that you the can in- make like industrial. Shoes out of? Yeah, okay. industrial hemp would be hemp would be C- anything with not out THC, correct? Uh, well, okay. So there's a couple different things. I might, I might not be right on this, but I know there's like okay, cannabis is a generalized form of what like all hemp and everything like that and then there's sense amelia which is what we're growing which is seedless marijuana seedless marijuana and the buds swell because they're not being pollinated so then there's hemp which is like you can like basically it's like a totally different plant and you can make like paper and you yeah it's the ruber it Dal- like it's that. the ruber dallas it's not an indica or sativa it's a yeah yeah, yeah. ruder yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah it's ruder it's d it's as it, i think it's ruder okay yeah okay um See, we, we, you, we both you, know enough that together we have something. <laughs> yeah. And then you got your CBD strains, which I am I think it's just – see, I'm not sure if it's like Sense Emilio or if it's, you know, cannabis right. or if it's like uh, well, I don't know, whatever else there is. But What they're doing to it that produces <clears throat> actual C- high CBD-rich buds. You yeah. know what I mean? Because we know no seeds makes high THC, but does that work for, t- for CBD type of thing? Right. I was actually saying this to my friend because I've I've been smoking the carts lately, uh, and like when I smoked bud recently, I I felt like I was missing other chemicals. You know what I mean? Really? Like yeah, when like you smoked the herb. Yeah, when I when I went back to the uh, the uh, flower, yeah, yeah, that I felt like like it was a different stone than i had been used to for the last like week or so it definitely is in my opinion yeah because you're getting and and it might not even be cbd or something like that for all we know there's like a a ninth psychoactive compound that it's a full it's a full profile man you got Mm -hmm. all your cannabis you got all your cannabinoids in there you got all your terpenes you got all that herb that mixes together in that certain way that only that certain bud can give 
You yeah. Know? And you can isolate this or that or this and that. And you can add these terpenes and, and do the certain ratio or whatever you, whatever you want to do. But it's not going to be as good as flour. And that's why it's always going to be there. Flour is always going to be wanted. You know, you, like people mm-hmm. are, I, I, like I've heard people say that like, oh, in the future, people are just going to eat it. Or people are just going to vape it. Or people are yeah. just going to drink it. But you, I, I think that there's always going to be that certain crowd of people which I think most stoners could say that they're always going to want to smoke flour. That's what I've noticed is that the people that were like bigger stoners before like carts came out mm-hmm. are the ones that still want flour. And yeah. the people that are like getting into smoking now are the ones that are like, oh, well, I'll just get a cart because I can just rip it one time. Yeah. Like, like they, they don't, they don't understand the ritual of smoking a blunt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that there's like a whole, Oh, for sure. Bro. Like, yeah, it's, it's yeah. like, you know, it, when someone texts you and they're like, oh, you know, I'm going to come over and hang out and, and hey, what's up, buddy? When someone texts you and they're like, oh, I'm going to come over and hang out, you know, or smoke a blunt, you know, and they come by and you're just passing like this vape back and forth and yeah, twice, yeah. T- two hits later, you guys are high and there's nothing to do, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And then that's the whole thing, too. You got the rolling process. You know what I mean? You got to break it down and get, yeah, your, get it, your finger sticky. It, yeah. You know it's, what I mean? It's personal. And then like, me, and we, me and my boy here, we used to go on, we used to call it Beezer Road, but it was just all these back roads here. But I think it's Burlington Road. Okay, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And uh, we would call it like Beezer Trail or Tokenail Trail or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like dumb shit like that. But that's the fun your thing, too. Rides. And that your adds to rides. Yeah, man. And that's like, that's whole. that's the whole part of it, man. You can. You know, that's the whole part of your high, you know? Yeah, it is. It def- It's like, it becomes something else. It's like drinking a beer at a bonfire. It, yeah. it like, it's different. Drinking a beer at a bar is different. Like, and, and it works that, actually, that it works that way with all drugs. It's like, it's an environmental thing. But again, with smoking it, the, the flower, it's just, I don't know, it's just very ritual. Mm-hmm. And I, I definitely think that as time goes on, more people will probably gravitate toward vaping and and like eating edibles and whatever blah 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 edibles i think are going to be the biggest disappointment in the industry though i'm going to say it because so? yeah yeah because everybody thinks that they're going to sell so well because everybody's going to just switch to edibles cuz they don't have to smoke it but the fact is you eat half of a brownie that tastes like shit and then most people can't take it like you have yeah. to be you have to be a pretty regular stoner to take any amount of an edible. A strong one, hell it, yeah, yeah, dude. yeah. Unless you're taking like a low, like a gummy that's set for, yeah. sent for <laughs> the week. Dude, I'll tell you, when I first went out to Cali, man, I was like, all right, let's fucking push this, right? We, me and my buddy Alex, we got a fifty-one fifty Corova black bar, and it was like a thousand milligram black bar. It's just a cookie, like as a brookie, as mm-hmm. a brownie and cookie. Okay, <clears throat> and um. Thousand milligrams, we broke it in half. Each ate half. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, it was like two hours later. <laughs> it was. I was actually felt like I was almost like to the point where I was tripping. Yeah. It edibles have like a hallucinogenic effect. Yeah. They definitely. I felt do. like I was like. I felt like I was on the couch, but the couch was up on the ceiling. It's and a I was different looking high. down at the TV and shit. Man, it was wild. That that's something that people don't really talk about with edibles too, and I've only heard it like mentioned like a couple times with certain like people. But edibles definitely have a hallucinogenic effect that's not present when you smoke it or vape it. I forget. Joe Rogan says. Joe Rogan said it. He's yeah. Like, he'll. It's like a certain chemical that your liver produces when you when you take high high amounts of yeah milligram you know thc milligrams it's just edibles. Uh, it's broken down in the liver because again when something's broken down in a different. Because when you smoke something, it's broken down in the bloodstream. And it, it's usually quicker reacting. You feel it quicker. And it lasts, you know, shorter. But it, you know, that's what's smoking. And you get the smoking effect. But mm-hmm. when something breaks down in the liver, it usually lasts like alcohol. Yeah. It's usually longer lasting. It usually <laughs> causes a little, like, it's probably going to cause more damage. Like, I, I'm i not going to be surprised when edibles in a couple years have some, some liver damage. <laughs> you attribute. think so, man? Y- really? Yeah. Like just just the way that it breaks down, because there's definitely there's always some collateral damage with taking of anything, and I I, I see edibles having a liver problem. I mm. do. Hey man, I mean there's people out there that you know that have been out where I live, you mm-hmm. know, their whole life doing butter every year. You yeah, know I mean? yeah, yeah. Butter every year, but but 
I mean, if, who who knows if they really have problems or what? But yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm, we're not gonna know. You know. Like yeah. that's that's the whole issue with making shit like this illegal because you doctors can't even test it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We don't really know what happens when a person, you know, a crackhead knows what it's like being on crack more than a doctor does because yeah. we've never really studied somebody <laughs> who's addicted to crack. Yeah, yeah. Like it it doesn't really make sense and like. There, there was a book that I was reading about, like, the group of people that, uh, so, when they were, they were originally testing food, this was how, like, the FDA got started. They started hiring guys that were just eating, like, ridiculous amounts of, like, formaldehyde and what? shit. Yeah, and writing down how much it took to, like, get sick and how much, like, was safe to eat and how much wasn't. <laughs> and... And that's uh, that's just what's gonna have to happen with drugs now. Is we're just gonna need to get some people together, and they're just gonna need to smoke a bunch of bud and and you know come up with an idea of like what's a standard deviation of marijuana. That's where this needs to start. What is the average like in to- like what is all right? So we know that a shot is equal to a glass of wine yeah. and equal to a beer. What in a joint? Is equal to a vape and equal to an oh, edible. It's so different. And I know. It's different with everybody. Exactly. Because we, you know, I could sit here and smoke a blunt with you, and but if my dad was in the rotation, you know what I mean, he mm-hmm. had two hits, he wouldn't be able to drive down the road to, you know. What I mean? Yeah. But I could sit exactly. out here and fucking drift down the road. You know what I mean? So Alcohol is the same way though. <clears throat> you, you know, some some it is. It is. Some people are fucking monsters, and yeah. other people can't. I can't hold my shit anymore. Like I, I stopped drinking, and now I can't like. Every time I try to drink, I wake up practically hungover. Really? Like, yeah, it's weird. It like I used to be able to drink a lot in high school, and again, not not recommended because I can't do it now. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I, you know, it's it's weird. Like my body definitely knows it's poison. Like you, yeah. def- like that. That's the thing about drinking is the 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 early stages of drinking mm-hmm. are really fucking easy. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you've thrown up from vodka twice and you can't fucking be in the same room as it anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. For sure, man. I have a friend that can't smoke pot though. Like he takes really? two he hates I, I he takes two hits and he can't walk. Oh. Honestly, it's crazy. It it's it's crazy. And he's been like that for years. And I I really don't know what it is. And like in high school, like he he would try it. He was like Oh, uh, you know, I'm just going to take a hit this one time. And we were sitting across from him like this. And he hit the bong. And I passed it to him because I packed it. And everybody was talking around me. And I was just eye contact with him. And his eyes just sunk in his head and just got bright red. And I I just, it looked like he just took a hit of crack. And I was like, dude, are you all right? And he was like, that was, that was a bad idea. Oh, my goodness. I was like, just lay down, dude. <laughs> just go <laughs> lay down. easy, pal. Uh, really? That's wow. weird. Some people like there's got to be like a gene or something that just it doesn't it doesn't sit well with some people. THC definitely doesn't sit well with some people. And it sucks for them. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but and that that friend of mine is a big drinker too, yeah. and he could. I was gonna ask you how is he with other things like is he, you know. Yeah, and like, and that's that's the thing too, and he's taken acid and had no problem with LSD <laughs> and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and just can't fucking smoke weed it's i don't know it, every drug is different and and you never you never know i i had a friend that was addicted to heroin tell me that he would do he would go out with like friends and do shit and he could do like a crazy crazy amount right and then he went back home and did it like in his bathroom and it fucking like just a tiny bit made him overdose just because wow. he was like so nervous and shit like that. Wow. Yeah, he. So it was all psychological. Yeah, maybe? He, yeah. He's like, like it, it, the environment is the thing. Like. Yeah. It's it's you never know, man. Man, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, and I it, don't know about all that. I don't yeah, know about any of that stuff. Exactly, but. and and with weed, it's so small scale. You know, like a blunt ride is better than you know smoking a blunt at this time versus this but when it comes to like serious drugs especially hallucinogens environment is the 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 whole fucking premise of it i was talking to one of my friends man recently and he was saying he he did some things and had a bad trip and like 
and it felt like he was stuck in it and it felt like he needed to get away from his friends and things like that. But I've heard that you can actually, it's all like, it really is all in your head and it might be some kind of subconscious feeling that you've already were feeling, but it wasn't brought to light yet or something like that. No. How do you feel about that? I talk about with, it with psychedelics and stuff in my, in my book. Cause I wrote a book. I went, I went to a bunch of different uh, people to write a book cause I took psilocybin mushrooms and I had an out, an out of body mystical experience that kind of, I quit smoking cigarettes and pretty much I would say it cured my depression. You can help yourself to that too. Uh, I would say it cured my depression. I'm a completely different person after it. And, and this is you talking about one time? One time. Okay. One one for, missed the, the again. And it was it was psilocybin. It was mushroom. You took mushrooms. Yeah. Okay. You want a higher dose? Okay. So I call it a feedback loop. And a lot of people who have bad trips later down the line, usually years later, will actually say that it helped them come to some realization. I have a friend that had a really, really bad trip on LSD, and he, years later, came to accept it. And, you know, some people have... All right, so when you have a mystical-type experience, you're usually laying down and you're unconscious. Like, people picture themselves, like, laying out and looking at the stars tripping. But, like, a full-blown, out-of-body experience, your eyes are shut and you're like a... You're God flying through space. Like... It, it's, a, <laughs> it's how much are you talking about this is like a so on psilocybin it would be a five gram dosage they call it a heroic dose uh five dried grams of psilocybin mushrooms induces this it floods the brain with serotonin and dopamine and i talk about it on my book uh i personally again th there's like the weird kind of like shaman spiritual way to talk about it and then there's like the sciencey way to talk about yeah. it so which one do you want to hear like, do you want to hear like, like science? All right. So, so the default <laughs> mode network of the brain, there's a little, there's a little brain up there. I could show you if I get up and get it, but, uh, the default mode network of the brain is, uh, it's responsible for cognitive time reception. Uh, it takes in serotonin and dopamine and, uh, it's, it's where the ego is essentially. It's how you identify spatial reasoning. When you take high doses of psychedelics, the default mode network, even on lower doses, it's reduced. But on higher doses, it shuts completely off. Now, when people think of psychedelics, they usually think like their brain would be overactive because it feels like that, right? Mm -hmm. But really, part of your brain is actually not working. It, it fully functionally shuts off part of the brain. Now, when this happens, you're exposed to what's called ego death. And you're not able to associate with your body anymore. And what might be happening is, and this could be hallucination entirely. You, you tend to, d it's kind of like being inside of a dream that feels like more real than this conversation. Like I I'll describe my first experience cause it it's not, I didn't really know how to play with it yet. So it's kind of easier to talk about. Uh, this is actually good for my book promotion too. Um, so I took f this one giant mushroom. It I named it King. This was right um, two months after my mom died. I was going through a lot. It was not. I was not in a happy place emotionally, and I'd taken mushrooms a good amount of times before, so I wasn't like afraid of anything. And that's that's stupid to not be like respectful of these things because because <laughs> shit's delicate. Like so, always be careful. You had confidence. Yeah, but I was confident. And you need confidence, but you can't yeah, you be cocky about it. Yeah. Like, y you know, so I ate this whole thing, and it, it kicked in really fast, which it shouldn't have done. And we smoked like a bowl, which which, which uh, some people recommend and some people don't. A doctor would tell you that you can't smoke a bowl before a psilocybin trip. I kind of think it helps. It, it helps calm people down. The best way to do it is to just lay down and just relax. But anyway, so I started feeling really uncomfortable. Like my anxiety started to spike. I was like, all right, we need to go for a walk. Like I need to, I need to do something. I went outside. I felt the wind like hit my face. I was like, this is, 
<laughs> not 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 how I'm feeling. Um, really? Yeah, I didn't like it. It was the first time I didn't like a, a, a mushroom experience, and I was like, I don't know what's happening. And I was like, so my girlfriend and my friend and my uncle. The reason I took it was because my uncle he lost his sister and I lost my mom, and we were like the two that were closest to her. And he came to me because he heard I had mushrooms, and he was like, let's. He's like 55 years, 60 years old, and was like, let's do mushrooms together. And I was like, this is kind of going to be like a big deal. So so we did them. He convinced me to do them. And we all did an eighth, which is lower than I'd recommend to have this kind of experience. But I'm really susceptible to psilocybin. Some people probably take need a lot more. Yeah. I definitely don't. Four <laughs> grams is enough for me. Most people need five from my book, from what I've learned from my book. But... Like a do- like again, the doctors that are doing the trials at like Johns Hopkins University, they're doing five. Uh, so uh, this so I was like, come on, let's go for a walk. And we got up to that sign over there, and my girlfriend and my friend were just walking behind me, and I felt like I was gonna throw up. And when- vomiting is a sign of ego death. Like it means like you're gonna have like an out of body experience. You need to lay down and just go with it, right? Really? Yeah, it like it's basically guaranteed at that point. And I had no idea about this. And no <laughs> most people don't know that kind of shit. That's why I'm writing this book cuz I'm just talking about my trips because most people can't even talk about what I'm talking about because it's so hard to remember. Yeah. And like I can, I think I can only do it cuz I like I can write. Like I had a friend when we were on acid one time. Uh he picked up a pen. I was sitting there and I started to write words. And I was like laughing about how awesome it was. <laughs> and my friend picked up a fuck it the pen and he tried to write and it just started to scribble. Like he couldn't he couldn't make any letters and he got mad and put it down and walked away. And yeah, like dude. I I was last time I did it was five micro dosing capsules. Okay. <laughs> right. And, That's uh, interesting. Yeah. Um my buddy brought him out there. So uh Oh, man, it was uh, it was so funny because I'm like, all right, microdosing, right? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. all right, so we're gonna take five of these things. So I was like, it was like a good hour, hour and a half went by, and then I went inside for something. We had we were going, we had a campfire going on. Mm-hmm. Went inside, came back out, and it was just like boom. And then, yeah, you know, I was looking at the sky like birds were flying around. It looked like a painting and shit. Yeah, see, awesome. that's that's like the, the typical lower dose. That I'd recommend for somebody before they do what I'm about to talk about. But it, it was so funny because like you were saying, your boy was scribbling. Like, yeah. I, I went inside, tried to roll the joint, could not do it. Yeah, and I was just trying to like stuff a cone or whatever, couldn't fucking do it. I was crunching the cone all up and shit, getting all frustrated. Like, <laughs> this is crazy. I can't even roll the fucking joint. Yeah, but, it 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 really that's the default mode network shutting off because your body is losing its you're losing your ability to reason. High doses like this one kid. Got on my Instagram because I posted about my psilocybin book and he was like there's nothing you could teach me about mushrooms dude I've been selling drugs since fucking god knows when at raves and this this and that and I was like you shouldn't take mushrooms at raves like it's a waste of mushrooms and it's a waste of a rave because a high dose of mushrooms causes paralysis and like like you know you you noticed that because you couldn't roll like yeah. that's the start of it and on what I was experiencing when I'm going for this walk is what you're talking about. I was losing my cognitive ability to functionally walk. Damn. And so I go up to this street sign and I'm about to throw up. And as I'll segue back into this, uh, I, I remember this was the first time I've had like an out of body experience. I saw myself above my body. Like I was up here and my body was down here about to throw up. And then I stood up and I was back in my body and I was like, what the fuck just happened to me i was like we need to go back to my house now like i think i'm having a bad trip and as i said that it was like the whole fucking world just got quiet like i was <laughs> like i can picture in my head is right now is bad trip. yeah that's that's exactly how it <laughs> Everything felt goes blue or some I, shit. I was like everybody we need to go back to the house now and i went back and we came to my backyard and i I was shaking because again, uh, they're, they're, they're psycho at when dopamine is flooded in the brain, most, uh, even antidepressants cause like shaking usually. So I was shaking really fucking bad because I had accidentally fucking taken this super duper mushroom. 
and King. I, yeah, King I, Kong. Yeah, again. And I, again, I learned later that the fact is that when a mushroom is that thick, it can hold more psilocybin, which is the psychoactive compound in it, than the average, like, even capsule. Really? Usually, Yeah, like, that one was just alien fucking suit. Like, it was just the super bud. <laughs> like, and, uh, it, like, when people have crazy trips like that, too, there's people that say that, like, back, way back, like, for, like, religions and Bibles and stuff like that, that people might have been tripping for certain this things. Is, this is where I'm going to start getting weird. Yeah, no, go ahead, get weird. So, I threw up. I laid down, and, and I heard... All right, so it sounded like a man's voice and a woman's voice put together. I've never heard, like, an alien at the same time. And it was, like, it was laughing. It laughed at me. And I, as I knelt down, like, I was throwing up, and I looked at the grass, and it just started to spin. And it, and I just shut my eyes, like, out of reflex. Like, everything was moving so fast, like, I couldn't see. Damn. So I just shut my eyes, and I just heard, you have to be okay with it. <laughs> And I was like, I heard this. Are like, you serious? You yeah, heard that? The, yeah, and I and I said this to my therapist, too. It was like, you have to be okay with this. You have to be okay with dying. And I was like, fuck me. What? Like, I, I was like, and then I, I was like, I guess this is it. Like, I guess I'm dead. <laughs> like, and I threw up. I threw up right there on the grass. And it went from, like, this black, creepy world that swallowed me up like this world that was just like nothing but sadness and it just started to glow really warm and then it like spun and it got really bright and colorful and it was like i saw myself throw up in this world and like it was like black like it like evil coming out of me that's wild and uh, my girlfriend picked me up from the ground because I just threw up in real life and I looked at her and like everything on top of it was like shamanistic and tribal and I saw veins running through the trees and everything outside and and my girlfriend and I think that's the happiest I've ever been in my entire life was right in that moment and I looked at her and I was like I think I'm ready to go back inside now <clears throat> and I came back inside and I laid down on the couch and I started to meditate like just out of re like I just laid down and I just I started doing these weird shapes with my body because I was trying to match the shapes that I was looking at in <laughs> in, in like my head yeah. and at some point I deduced that this right here in front of me was just like a red color but it's not like a real red that can be described because you've seen trippy colors and they're not real you know what I mean but yeah. they are real and so it was like this red and it flowed into like this blue and I'd realized that like that blue was like death and that the life was just flowing into death and then it just like kind of spread out into everything and my mom and my dad came out of like a rainbow and landed in front of me and we started talking for like the first time I mean the first time since they died obviously and I, it, it made me feel amazing. Like I, I came out of it and I was like, holy shit. Like I just talked to dead people, but I couldn't like even say that yet because I was still tripping balls and I realized I was tripping balls and I was like, holy shit. Yeah. I could like go back and so I fucking went back and I meditated back. And this time just my mom came back. It's hard to remember what I said in the conversation, but I know that I talked to I guess dead people or hallucinations of dead people. And my mom came out of it because the day that she died, I got this tattoo and my tattoos were like part of like that big trippy pattern that was the universe. I guess like I gave up part of my body to the universe or something. And I showed my mom my tattoo and she was able to see everything that I was going to be in my life. And she smiled and after that experience, uh, I, I just haven't felt like depressed. It like, it was like, and I went to therapy the next session, and I was like, I feel completely different now. Really? Like, yeah, I I quit smoking right after that, um, and yeah, that was wow, dude. 
And my yeah. uncle, who was tripping on the back porch, this is even weirder. I got up at the same time and was like, I just talked to ghosts, bro. Like, I just talked <laughs> to fucking dead people. And my uncle came back, came back on the back porch from laughing. And he said that he talked to, like, Jesus and on clouds and saw my mom and dad in, like, a Christian heaven. And they told him that everything was going to be okay. And then the wind started blowing. And then he came out of the trip. And that was at the exact same time as me. And my girlfriend and my other friend had taken the same amount of psilocybin as me and my uncle and didn't have any experience like that. Huh. It's weird. It's very... It's, it's Your uncle is your mother's brother. Brother, right? yeah. And, and he was my dad's best friend, too. So oh, wow. he had a connection to... Yeah. It was crazy. Man, that's crazy. That is... I mean, that's like life-changing. It did. It did change my whole fucking life. It really did. That's why I wrote a fucking book about it. Yeah. And and you can induce it. Like, you have to induce these things. Because I've done this on high doses now with five grams and on one gram trips. And it's harder to do them on one gram trips. And it's less real. Because yeah. on higher doses, you can't tell the difference between what I'm talking about and reality. And it's fucking weird and hard to describe. Yeah, yeah. It's like being a color and feeling a color. I hear you. Like, there's three ways that humans, like, are able to remember things, and it's, uh, it's like, um, there's feeling, like, feeling the wind on your face, there's, like, visuals, so, uh, seeing something in your head, and then there's, like, hearing it, and it's, like, all of those things at the same time, but it's none of those things at the same time. Yeah. It is super weird, man, for sure. What, um... Uh, what has been your biggest struggle with your mental health, I guess, since what you've gone through, if you're fine talking about that? Yeah, no, it's cool. I like, I like talking about things, you know, cause I think it helps it, other people. Yeah. It brings it to light, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, it's no good to just not talk about things. I mean, yeah, but, um, I'd say, I mean, I'm still dealing with my mom's, you know, passing just because it was so sudden and absolutely mine too. Just. Yeah, it just um, feel like you never got to really say bye or anything, and that's kind of the tough thing. But you, it's like the one thing that I have realized is that time helps. You know, yeah, like absolutely. just just time, and then there's nothing you can do to speed that along or nothing. You know, it's like I just kind of deal with it as like as it is. Like I'm out there in the mountains, and it kind of helps me because. I'm in like complete isolation, so <clears throat> I can kind of take a step back and look at everything from a, from a distance and not be in, but not be wrapped up in it. Still, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, like it, you're it like, gives me time to think about things. You you feel like set like kind of like an outsider view, you yeah. know? Like you like like you're watching TV, a TV show of life outside, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. How? Um, uh, if you could, that really, that's how I felt too. And the psilocybin thing really helped me come to grips. That's that's what I say about these drugs. And what's interesting is they help they they help people come to grips with acceptance for better or yeah. worse. Because people for the the trial to help stop smoking actually, uh, they had a hundred people, and I think eighteen out of a hundred people got divorced right after they had their like big psilocybin trip. Really? Yeah, because they came out of it like, like they talked to God and God told them to get divorced type of shit. Like, so I'm gonna be a little, I'm gonna be a little Joe Rogan fanboy right now. But okay, no, go ahead. So he was described, he described it awesomely, and I don't know if you've heard it yet, but I'm probably say it for everybody else. But like he was describing it as like your brain being a like a slope of snow, like that you can sled down. Yeah, and you, that slope of snow, whatever it be, like. If you're sledding down it all day long, it's going to create paths in the snow for your sled to slide in. So even if you deviate from the path, your sled's going to slip right back in the path and go down the same route that it's been. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you take any dose of psilocybin or whatever it is, it kind of lays a fresh powder down of snow. Yeah. So you can kind of go anywhere with that sled. And that sled is kind of like your thoughts. You know what I mean? To where your thoughts kind of fall in that same pattern of thinking. You know what I mean? And when you take that dose of psilocybin, it kind of 
let you think differently almost, you know, let you might think of something a different way that you haven't thought of it before, you know, and I have done, I tripped twice since my mom passed away Mm -hmm. and, um, I feel like it's helped. I don't feel like it's cured anything, but I feel like it has helped. That's that's the thing about mystical type experiences because people that come out of them, everybody seems to come out of them. Like this was a positive experience for me, unless it was a profoundly negative experience. Yeah. But everybody in a clinical trial recently has come out of it like this has been a positive experience. But only the people that actually have the full-blown, like, I talk to fucking God, bro, seem to be the ones that that actually have full-blown, like, they're the ones that get clean, and they're the ones that get divorced, and they're the ones that... Changes their life. Yeah, it changes their whole life after. Yeah, there, there's a there's a difference, and that's uh, I talk about that in my book. It, it's really about how you take it. There's yeah. a there's an experiment that they did with LSD in the '60s called the Good Friday Experiment, where they took a bunch of people that were Catholics at a Catholic church, and they dosed the Eucharist, which is the body of Christ, with LSD, and they had the priest you know do his whole sermon, and they dosed like three of the people while well, during the sermon went off. And all of them had a religious experience during while well, this priest was talking. And then one of them ran out convinced that they were, you know, Christ and they had to sedate this guy. But, but you know, there's somewhere in there is the thing that's actually helping people. Yeah. The guy that started uh, Alcoholics Anonymous started it after an LSD trip. Really? And the guy that it was inspired – that he, he was inspired to start Alcoholics Anonymous for – actually killed himself from alcohol and uh that was pretty much because he didn't have that like they said that he like talked about this philosophy but didn't live it you know what i mean yeah and the other guy really believed what the fuck he was talking about and that's the difference is and i don't care that's what's really good about it is i could be completely wrong and i could have not talked to ghosts and it could just be complete hallucination and why the fuck does that matter? Because I have real scientifically proven results. I function better in society. I am a nicer person, I think. Uh, I don't smoke cigarettes, which is, you know, going to make me live longer. Uh, it, it, and the way that it works is it's called neural path working and neuroplasticity. And it's how, like, we were talking about how if you do the same thing every day, you get really good at doing it. And yeah. then, like... So there, there's like really drastic examples of this that I could talk about. Like the guy, my favorite example is there's this kid that uh, he's able to remember like numbers. Like he can remember like the infinite digits of pi. He's one of those kids, right? Like is he, is he, does he have like a form of autistic or uh, It's auto- not autism? autism. No, they thought that his brain was going to run like a lot of electricity through it. Because when, when things cognitively solve math, there's a lot of electrical functioning, right? Problem solving takes a lot of brain power. His brain, at some point in his life, like the math is solved like here in the brain. And like things like heartbeat and breathing, they're all done up here because they're just automatic, right? Well, at some point in his life, the place that solved math uh, moved to the front of his brain. And now it takes about as much electricity in the brain as it does to make his heart beat as it does for him to remember a number. And he credits that to being – to doing – Is it harder for him to breathe and shit now though? No, not – it doesn't – I mean it, I don't like, know. Like is it reversed? You know, is it Who switched? knows? Who knows how that guy lives? Yeah. But he but he sees, <laughs> yeah. he sees numbers as colors. And I forget this guy's name, but I talk about him in my book too. But – that, that has to do with neuroplasticity. And the brain will change. The brain is subject to change over long periods of time. Like all organs are. If you, know, if you smoke a lot, your lungs get bad. If yeah. you drink a lot, you know, same, same shit. It, it's just, for better or worse, the brain in neuro, with neuroplasticity can do things like stutter. And it, you, it can lose stuttering. Addiction is yeah. like one of the, the least healthy. And it's easier. It's, it, you know, all of a sudden, you know... Every time you get in your car, you light up a cigarette. So you have to reinvent your whole life yeah. without having that cigarette when you get in your car. And with psilocybin, you, you're you able to just look at it like, oh, like, why did I need a cigarette every time I was getting in the car? Like, I was actually spending a buck extra every time I drove fucking anywhere. Yeah. Like, 
and 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 you know that your whole fucking life and everybody's been telling you your whole life but it just doesn't click it, it's like again like how people just like uh, like i died like i overdosed and died and that's like i'm i'm done i'm clean now like it, it's that push safely i think especially if it was done by therapists that's what i think it belongs i'm not the biggest fan of like psilocybin being done like over the counter like pot should definitely be sold recreationally mm-hmm. mushrooms i think probably better they're in, getting there yeah they're get, denver colorado vegas, De- was vegas it, too it was, uh, nevada i think I, i'm not sure i know be colorado both. is yeah colorado don't give a fuck <laughs> california's probably right there too which would be awesome no i mean and 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 i think that's going to open the door because first off there's going to be gas stations that don't give a fuck they're just going to start selling <laughs> yeah. mushrooms and then other people get so much crazy shit we used to get like sleepy time bars at fucking the melatonin bars yeah yeah fucking crazy shit dude yeah it's sorry to catch you up. no no that's exactly how it is designer drugs like we're definitely a thing for a period of time they're and, selling cbd weed up there it's dexco now i think and sunoco and Almer too they got everything yeah. they got all the cbd products and shit they got ke- they got a uh, kratom the fuck what? Kratom? yeah yeah kratom yeah Kratom, Kratom, whichever one you, however you pronounce it. Oh, yeah, that, that's pretty good. I've tried it? it. That's like a psychedelic in uh, some country. It's, uh, use it as like a, it's like really pop. Alcohol. Not really psychedelic. It's really, yeah, no, it's more like a coffee kind of thing. Yeah, uh, the, it's, uh, it's, yeah. well, it's both. Uh, in small doses, I tried it, I tried it too. In, I, I only did the small doses. I didn't like it. it tastes- yeah, it, t- it tastes terrible. I did the capsules, though, because, okay. so... In small doses, it's kind of like caffeine. I didn't do any high doses, but they compare it to heroin because it, it attaches to the opioid receptor. And really? it, yeah, and like people are using it to get off of opiates actually because if you just, you know, if you take five Kratom pills a day, all of a sudden you don't feel the need to take a Percocet even though you've been addicted to Percocet for a while. Uh-huh. So, but they want to make Kratom illegal because one guy died, and he died on like oxycotton and Kratom. Like he didn't die from just Kratom. No. Yeah. And uh, it's Thailand. It's Thailand is the country it comes from, and basically it's just crushed. It's crushed up leaves from this tree, and people chew it in Thailand. You know, it's just kind of like a casual thing. I thought it kind of sucked. Like there's nothing really particularly great about it. You know, like, it's not, like, a super fun drug. Like, that that's the thing about drugs is, like, a lot of people don't understand, like, how shittily drugs are chemically compound. Like, if you talk to, like, a, a chemist, like, a real chemist, and they look at alcohol, they're, like, it's stupid that anyone yeah. wants to do it. But the, you get sung, that's the thing about alcohol. You get hung over the next day. There's no other drugs, like, I yeah. mean, there's some of them or whatever, but... Not like alcohol. Not like an alcohol hangover. No, and like I've talked to to heroin addicts who who are like, no, the, like the reason I got addicted to heroin was because it does. I don't. I didn't have a hangover the next day. Like it, it's what it is. Is it's like it's a forget. Like certain drugs don't have the the withdrawal symptoms mm-hmm. of alcohol. Like even again, heroin is forgiving right up until that point where you're fucked. Like coke is forgiving right up and like there is like just you know you just keep doing coke and then it disappears and that's just it and then you spent two thousand dollars in a night and coke is really hard to overdose on cocaine is dude, like dude my i mean well i don't know if you knew this but my brother passed away like two months ago no i did not what he from from, from he, they found cocaine and they found fentanyl in the system it, it's uh, i i hate it's probably the fentanyl it doesn't take a lot of fentanyl i mean he probably some asshole really cut his cocaine with fentanyl yeah fentanyl is is what somebody murdered your brother yeah. it, like i hate to you know be aggressive but that I, I i feel for you man it's just crazy because like just think about how many people you know that would do that would sit down and do a line of coke yeah and, and, and it's like that could happen to you know anybody uh, yeah i mean it's mis- just crazy it, it's 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 and y- Again, nobody expects to die from something like that. And that's the thing about legalization. Like, if we were, if some, if you could go to fucking the local gas station and buy Coke, it wouldn't be cut with fentanyl. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You would still need rehabs and you would need fucking programs that are dedicated to fucking helping these people. Yeah. But, but you could actually fund those programs with the cocaine. 
You could. Yeah. I mean, you. I mean, same it, thing with weed, man. It, yeah. Same I'll, thing. Weed, weed is weed. It, it is the gateway drug for 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 treating drugs the way that they should have been treated the whole time. Yeah, in sure. my opinion. For sure. Because. You can't just outlaw something because then 50 years down the road, if you want to do any research on it, you can't. Yeah, exactly. It, it The dumbest decision this country ever made, and, and the whole world followed our example yeah. for the most part because we set the example for the world, was deciding that drugs were a society's pro- – like a government problem and not a medical problem. If the Surgeon General sat down and was like, we're going to test – you know cocaine the way we tested formaldehyde then you know it would be treated differently we would know exactly what cocaine addiction looks like we would know what a safe dosage of cocaine is we would know how to treat coke coke addiction again and these drugs were used safely for long periods of time before that methamphetamine was legal for a long time before it wasn't and they have I, I, I'm a firm believer in using them for medical uses. And there's definitely, like, ketamine is an example of one. It's a really weird example. Steve-O uh, accredits ketamine to curing his addiction when, when his mother died. Really? Yeah, and his depression and everything like that. And wow. it, he's got a weird documentary about ketamine where he talks about how it, like, might have faded his barrier between this and the other side of fucking reality and I was shit. watching that actually I was watching the Steve documentary like yesterday at the airport and he was talking about Ryan Dunn and how wow. and how Ryan Dunn basically just passed away from alcohol and, and and like he was you know he crashed his car when he was drunk but that day he said that he was with Ryan Dunn and they were filming and he fucking had to go to his car and take like shot tobacco because he was shaking and and Steve was sitting there looking at him like dude what's going on like He's yeah, like, dude, like I needed a couple shots. I got, I got, I had to stop shaking, you know. And, and Steve was night, the he worst one. Crashed his car and fucking died. It's crazy. It, and again, sometimes that's what the the scariest part is. Sometimes it's the guy that's like in the middle. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like Ryan Dunn probably wasn't fucking the fu- like Steve O was fucking really a problem. You yeah, know what I mean? Fucking big problem. Dude. Yeah, and and like Ryan Dunn was probably like just together enough that nobody was gonna fucking question it. Yeah. Like he, you know, sometimes people are afraid to say something because they're the guy doesn't have that big of a problem or yeah. it's not a problem yet. But with things like fucking powders and fucking drunk driving, it can be one time can be the last time. Exactly. It's a shame, man. It it is. It really is. I we lost a lot of people in this town. For sure, man. For a stupid for a small town, we have lost a lot of people for not a good it reason. Seems like it anyway. You know, I don't know what the actual statistics are, but it seems like something to do with Shalik or, or what. I mean, somebody it's freaky, man. So I mean, there was a kid that overdosed the same day that my mom died. Um. There was a, you know, our mutual friend, uh, and a friend of mine died at 14 from Oxycontin and Xanax. Really? Like, yeah. And it, 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 it affects people of all ages and all classes. Some, some of these kids had a lot of money. Some of these kids grew up real poor. Some of these kids, you know, it affects everybody differently. And nobody is like... I don't know, above it, I uh, guess. Yeah. 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 It, it, you really don't know. And I, I, I don't know. It, it's hard to, the first step has to be them deciding that they want help, though. For sure, man. Um, cannabis, though, is a real forgiving drug. I think that's the best, the best, the best word for cannabis is forgiving. I would say, like, Honestly, cannabis for me does whatever it wants. Does whatever I want it to do. Like, you know, like it's just it, it's so different for everybody. And you know, if I want it, and and even sometimes I've noticed. Like, I don't know if it's just me or what, but honestly, I don't really like. I can't really tell the difference between indica or sativa. Like, if I want to get up in the morning and wake and bake right when I get up, <laughs> I have to go straight to work afterwards. So, right. I it's not like I can be fucking sleepy or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So it's like some days I make it to be my morning coffee. 
You understand? So it's like yeah, but you could also make it to be like your nightcap to go to sleep at night. You know, yeah. but it's the same bud. Yeah, it is. You know, and it's it's that's one thing I've noticed. I mean, it's there's certain sativas that make me some you know well, I will summer. say sometimes paranoid or sometimes like anxious or whatever. Mm-hmm. But that's why I kind of lean towards my indicas. You know. But, like, for the most part, dude, I really can't tell. Like, if, if you handed me a blunt or something and I didn't know what it was, you know, I don't think I would be able to tell you. Depending on the situation and depending on, like, your environment that you're in, like you were talking about earlier. Yeah, it's yeah. It's hard to tell, man. It's the, tough, dude. It, can you tell? I I think I can tell when something is, like, super dank versus, like, super fluffy. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I could tell some purple shit versus, like, some really like like lemony shit is usually the sativa this mm-hmm. more sativa end of bud but it, most bud isn't even like it's impossible for it to be like an indica or sativa you know like realistically genetically yeah, yeah almost yep. everything is a hybrid so yeah. so there, there's a lot of cross and i bet you most people probably can't tell we oh. have like 95 percent sativa really we have we have really strong sativas out there. We got Super Silver Haze, which we, we had last year. We got it tested last year and came in at 20.04% THC, which I thought was a great number. And we put that on the shelves all the way down to San Diego, man. And um, we're growing that again this year. It's our second generation. So uh, I'm really excited, man. It's fucking going to be awesome. Dude, you would, I would, you would love it, man. You got to come out. Yeah, I definitely do have to go out there. We can. Steven made it out there. How was it? How was your... Awesome. It was awesome. I, I, I definitely need to go there. I, I want to travel as far across the, like this country. I was talking to the other day. I was just talking some shit, pretty much, because I'm ri- I've been riding my bike a lot again, and my friend from Germany is coming, uh, the end of August. Sweet. And w- he's biked across Europe. He's biked from Germany to England. He's biked from Germany to Spain for like one was for a rave and one was just to go to a fucking bar, just because they just decided they were gonna do it. And so I'm using him as like my excuse to fucking get my ass to do stupid shit. So I'm either gonna bike to Philly or to like Wildwood, you know, and mm-hmm. then just you know hop in the beach or do whatever the fuck I'm gonna do when I get there. But I would love to go across like cross country come on out yeah dude. come trim some buds i <laughs> come smoke some bud yeah come catch some big ass fish come wrangle some bears dude <laughs> come on out to the hills man i got a bed for you i'm i definitely <laughs> i definitely need to do that that's Just definitely something i will be doing in with my life save some pounds we might be able to you know and that's the other thing too trim season dude mm-hmm. we need workers man for sure so you know <laughs> hey man like, yeah, like next no. year or whatever we might need you for a couple months you know? hey I can definitely do that next year without a fucking doubt <laughs> uh that, that's the thing I've heard is like there's always a need for trimmers out there oh, it's dude we have a trim machine okay it's like a $14,000 trim machine right and it's Jesus hooked up to this Christ. big, huge industrial vacuum that sucks all the trim out of the machine and all this crazy shit. It's got all these blades and shit. And <laughs> you still need to go through every single bud and clip through every single lead of every single bud. You still need to do that. Yeah. So that is so much work. You could sit there all day long and literally try your best to get as much done as you could. You might get a pound and a half, two pounds done. <laughs> So if you're on a farm that has 500 pounds or 1,000 pounds, you got one person doing it, it's going to take you 1,000 days to trim all your butt. <laughs> so think about that. You know what I mean? That's why when you, you want to turn your product over, of course, as fast as you as fast as fast you can because it degrades over yeah. time. So, yeah, no, absolutely. You know, that, so that, that's the main thing is getting a harvest, take care of it, getting it trimmed up, getting it cured, and then selling it right away. That was actually what I heard a lot of people were complaining about dispensaries was that the buds was sitting were sitting in there for long periods of time and they weren't as dry as when they were when they were getting them off their plug on the street. Oh yeah, dude, they had people coming off the hill with pounds, come down to San Fran with five pounds, be like, "Yo, you know, I got this, whatever. We need this. We'll make up a nice name for it, and then boom, put it on the shelves and it's gone." Five yeah, pounds, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I mean, now it's coming. You know, people are doing. 100 packs you know what i mean where you got 100 pounds of all the shit that's going in there 
and we had we sold 20 pounds to true humble mm -hmm. and it just we just got the, all the money back from last season wow we just made all of our money back now oh wow so it takes a while man because it because it has to get all tested it's got to mm -hmm. get all jarred up and then it's got to get delivered out you know and it sits on the shelves and you know what's the sealed up and whatnot but still yeah what's the quality control like i mean obviously they're looking for like spider mites and shit but yeah there's uh i think there's three different tests there are rna tests and um there's a biological test and then there's like um a visual test and then i think there's there's some kind of other test i'm not sure but oh uh, there's like a thc test and then Pro yeah probably for organics and certain pesticides um but yeah, everything gets lab tested now. I mean, um, and it's it comes out of your money that you make off of each pound. You know, if if you're <laughs> selling twenty pounds of something, you know, and it might go from eleven hundred dollars down to nine hundred pound nine hundred. You know, because you you have to pay for transportation. Mm -hmm. You have to pay for packaging. You have to pay for testing on each pound. Is that how all farmers work? Is that how That's like how everything is going down out there? Yeah. Well, I mean, like if if you were like raising chickens, for example, like do chicken farmers pay for their tests, like for the testing of like? Uh, it's so much more lenient too, and that and in like I see. I don't know about chickens, but dude, I will tell you, California is full of wine, wine okay. farms. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Just yeah, grapes, okay, Napa say, Valley and stuff like that. Farms, yeah. yeah, and they use Vineyards. so much water, it's ridiculous. That's I mean, why there was always a fucking drought. And wine kills. I mean, it's alcohol. Yeah. And it's like they give us cannabis growers so much shit out there, dude. It's ridiculous. We're we're allowed to pull one thousand gallons a week for our domestic only. We're not even allowed to use any water from our spring right now. We have a spring in our property. We're not allowed to use it for our plants. <laughs> really? So we have to collect all of our water in the winter time when we can't when it's wet season. Okay. How how big is your rain collection? Dude, we have. Dude, it's ridiculous. We had <laughs> eighteen thousand gallons of water storage between like it doesn't even rain up seven there. tanks. And then we made some money last year. We bought two fifty thousand gallon tanks <laughs> that are bigger than an Olympic sized pool. That's how big that is. Of just <laughs> just a water bladder. And then we have three ten thousand gallon tank so it's all like, above ground this is all yeah ooh, these are all in shit. big huge like it looks like a big water balloon it looks like a big <laughs> water bed dude. dude you can like they're like five feet tall and you can get up and walk on these things dude holy fuck we had one shit. go down the rip we had one go down the hill because they're not they don't it's not a tank it's yeah like just it's water just a, a big bag. sack of water and do we put we're putting ten thousand gallons in this damn thing and we're watching this thing close right we got like we got two pumps going on and we're pumping down from down low and i go down there and we go down there and check on it and dave's up on top of it and i was like it's not moving right and he's like nah it ain't moving and i was like it's you moving. sure you sure it's, it's moving or are you sure it's not moving he's like oh shit it's moving a little bit so i was like all right i'm gonna bounce out of here and i fucking went down right to the motor and i was on my way to shut the motor off dude five seconds after i said that the fucking whole bladder went down the hill dude was it just gushing water the whole way? No, or it was, it was sealed, close. Yeah. Sealed off? Just Didn't even tear or anything, but dude, Dave was like trying to hold it and shit. It was so funny. I was, I was like, oh man, I was dying. And dude, it happened so fast. Like dude, so much water moved so fast. It was amazing. It's even funnier knowing that it's Dave because Dave is just such a funny guy. And, yeah. and it's like a sitcom. Like you <laughs> Like, you're, like, all together, and Dave's just on top of this thing. Like, it's not rolling. And then, then we had walkie-talkies with us, and, like, all I hear is, like, all right, just try and hold it. I'm going on the motor. That was me talking, right? And then, and then, Dan, it's gone, Dan. I tried to save it. It's gone, man. Oh, man, it was so funny. The damn thing went, like, 100 yards down the hill, like a steep hill. We had to... We had to crank it, hand crank it out with a big, huge ratchet, dude. It was took three days to recover the bladder, dude. Oh my gosh! Three ah, fucking. days, I can't believe dude. it didn't tear. Me too. That's crazy. It's like strong ass nylon. Yeah, that's some shit it's right for there. It's for gasoline, actually. Wow, that's yeah, why that like shit's not going anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Wow, dude. army gasoline tanks. You fill them with fucking water. Yeah, man. It's uh, it's the way of life out there. No, just, I mean, 
I, one of my again like I have like stupid personal goals I guess but like I I want to have my house like be self sustaining like I think that's the that's most dope. The, the most dope thing yeah. to it's be cool. to be self sustaining you know what I mean yeah it it's just got to feel you know great to it just does, have your own shit it's cool because I know if anything goes down out here I'm cool like I, <laughs> like ain't nobody like if we got a zombie outbreak or something. I ain't gonna go to Humboldt first. Yeah, no, it's definitely. You know what I mean? You're definitely in the safety zone right there, <laughs> up in the mountains. You know, but uh, man, I I do love it. It's cool. It's uh, and when you're working on a farm all day too, you're working outside, so you're not using any electric. You turn, you make sure you're turning all your lights off. You know what I mean? You make sure you, you know you don't really run shit. You know what I mean? Like what? Like yeah, I don't watch TV anymore. I don't eat fast food anymore. You know any of that? Like it's just like. It's cool, man. It is cool, but it did take a lot. It took some time to get used to that. It took yeah, a lot of time to yeah. get used to that because I don't go to bars anymore. I don't go to I see my. I know this is the first time did I've seen my drinking? cousin in a while. Do you while. still drink a lot? I still drink. Yeah, yeah, not as much. Like I don't. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't partake on it only in the weekends. Like there's no more weekend anymore for me. It's <laughs> every day is the same now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So know. every once in a while, I might I don't know. You know what I mean? I might go like whatever do. Just get like a six pack or something and just bring it back to the house. Yeah, but. no. Drinking alone is just for me. It's sad. There's nothing fun to it. Like it's a, drinking is like a group activity. I could yeah. smoke by myself and there's nothing. There's yeah. nothing like sad about See, it's it. It's tough when like I just don't have anybody to chill with. So uh, yeah, you, know. you just need to crack. <laughs> you just need to crack. Yeah, yeah just smoke a couple blunts and uh, maybe play some MLB show or something. You know. Yeah, exactly. That's that. That's how I drink. You know, just. You know, usually just with people now. I feel you. Just just a couple once in a while, and that's it. That's what this weekend's going to be. It's going to be nuts, dude. We got a <laughs> Ocean City, Maryland. We got, oh, man, it's going to be crazy. We got a house on the beach, dude, for like three days. We're going to be with some crazy cats. So it'll be a good time. What's your uh, What's your plan? Are you going to do anything interesting? Well, I, I don't think I'm allowed to say, but, I mean, I don't know when this podcast will be out, but... uh. I don't really know the plan. I know we're going paintballing, and uh, I know we. What was it? I know we're going to be going like bar crawling and shit. And I think they wanted to do like a boat ride or some shit like that. So I don't know. Boat rides can get wild. I can't do <laughs> boats, man. I get motion sick so bad. I went parasailing and threw up on the wild, uh, across the Wildwood Boardwalk from fucking however the fuck high up it is when you parasail. <laughs> it's yeah, I, it sucked. It was funny. It's funny to talk about, but. I definitely couldn't do it. Like, I think about stuff like that. Like, I probably, I would love to go skydiving, like, one day, you know? Mm -hmm. But, like, I'd probably throw the fuck up on the way down. And that's, that's not worth it, really. That's like pissing in the wind, dude. Yeah, it is. It is. And there's going to be someone strapped to me during, (laughs) it's going to be sad. Yeah, I can't do that to somebody else. They probably know how to duck it. They probably, probably. you're probably above them. So it just fucking. Uh, so you want to go? You said you don't want to go skydiving. I would, I would do it, but lo- I would do it. Like I love doing stuff, especially one time. I'm afraid. How do you I, feel about snorkeling? I went or like I the say scuba diving. Like I am I like a, I would love to do it. That's a good ass idea. Here's That's something thing, I would dude, like to do. It's they say it's more dangerous than skydiving. I believe it though. I do. Dude, you're in a different world. That shit's dude. There's there's you could get. Steve Irwin got shanked, bro. Yeah. Like, he was the man. He and, was the man. And they fought, like, like, you know, shit happened. Dude, the ocean is... Have you ever been, like, snorkeling or anything like that? I, I went mean... to Discovery Cove in Florida. So okay. it's like an, it's like a, you know, it's an enclosed I thing thought, where oh, you can... Okay. where you, I got you. It, Where you, like, I swam with dolphins and yeah. shit. My first kiss was a dolphin, actually, because you had to kiss the dolphin. Uh... You, uh, and like there's all kinds of like clownfish and stuff in like a coral reef, and you just swim on the top and you can look down at them and shit. I got but, you. but it's all like set up, yeah. So there's nothing dangerous there, yeah. Like See, in, in the, the real about... world, there's real big fish that sometimes just show up and eat other fish, yeah. And uh, I've gone to a lot of like tropical islands and stuff, I've been on five cruises, so I've been to a lot of different okay. places, but um. I've had some weird experiences snorkeling, and I will say that I've never felt more vulnerable than, like, when I was snorkeling. Just That's because, crazy. like, dude, you can't run or anything like that. Like, if a shark wants to get you, like... They're so fast, yeah, you're they fucked. just glide. You're just fucked. It's like being on a different world, you know? 
Or even if you're underwater, dude, think about if you're 20 feet underwater, something happens, you start to freak out, dude, you're going to drown. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In shallow water. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember one time I was in Bermuda and I was snorkeling just on a beach. And it was like maybe eight feet of water or something. And all I saw was I didn't see anything. Everything went black. And I was like, what the fuck? And I went up and I thought and I saw like a big, huge shadow around me. And I thought it was like a big fucking shark around me, dude. But it was just a fucking like thousands and thousands of bait fish. <laughs> it scared but, the fuck out of me, but dude. But that's the kind of shit that happens, though. Like, it's just a big, like, at first it'll be a school of that. And then whew, yeah. it's just a, cl- a yeah, cloud of right. blood a second later. You know what I mean? That, dude, the ocean is scary as fuck. Uh-huh. Mariana's, like, the trenches and shit, they bug the shit out of me. That that's scarier than space. Definitely space. Like, dude, the, anything super far away from like ground level, I feel like is freaky because up in a plane, it doesn't really freak me out anymore. Mm-hmm. But if something goes wrong, you're thirty thousand feet in the air. Oh, you're fucked. You're dead. If something it's goes dead. wrong like, in the Marianas Trench, I what is it like sixty thousand feet deep or some yeah. crazy shit like that? You're fucked, dude. Yeah, there's that. Uh, well, uh, James Cameron, he's in that documentary and he's just sinking down at this one point and he just goes, uh. This is where they told me that if I di- if I died that uh, I wouldn't feel it. I'd just be turned into a meat cloud because of the pressure. Wow. And it's like, wow, yeah, you're just just again, it's just pressure at that point because there's just so much water on top of you. It's it's crazy. Water is so powerful. And it's crazy thinking that like there's there, there's animals that just live like that. They just Chilling. live with so much pressure on top of them all the time, like. We, Ow. yeah, again, if they come up, they just get ripped apart because they're not fucking used to not having pressure. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> it, it's pressure is a weird thing for sure. That that and it, it's oceans are just scary. Like, you ever been on a cruise or anything? No, I Dude, haven't. It's, that's another very eerie thing to look out into the distance and not see any light or just bad. It's just black, dude. Like I could not imagine falling off the back of a cruise ship. And having the cruise ship just sail away in the distance, dude. Yeah, And having no. you just tread water in blackness, dude. People hallucinate pretty much that whole time, usually. Really? Yeah, they, they, like, they'll, and they know it's hallucinations, usually. When they're alone for that long and they're just treading water, like, they'll see boats that look like fucking pirates and ghosts and shit like that. And they'll just, you know, sometimes it's like, it's not, like, there's this one kid that, uh, he fell off a cruise ship, I forget between what country, but, um. He claims that he was going to get eaten by sharks, and there were sharks that were, like, below him on whatever the fuck he was treading water on. And he felt dolphins fight the sharks away, and that the dolphins, like, led him back to water. And no one ever saw any of these dolphins, and no one knows if this kid is lying or telling the truth or whatever, but but he claims that something led him to a boat. And, you know, maybe he was just tripping balls. And it's cra- it's crazy to think about. And it happens with athletes, too. Like, people that do, like, the, the like... Ultra marathons. Ultra marathons yeah, yeah. and I've shit like that. that. Yeah, it's... You... you it, Like... It, it's why... Again, like... Your it, mind puts itself in that place to where you kind of put yourself out of that position. And I think it's the similar to, like, the psilocybin thing. It's like the default mode network shuts off yeah. in in times of, like, weird crisis extreme being tired or whatever dude de- i mean i would think death yeah death. Like your brain i think that's honestly part of like dementia and Alzheimer's. i used to work in a nursing home mm-hmm. and like third floor was just the dementia for, you know it was mm, just that's so sad it was a crazy floor so Fucking, but that's i the think honestly thing. dude i'll say that i don't think it would be a bad way to go because you're not there yeah you like most of the people Everybody has their episodes or whatever, but most of them up there are just chilling, dude. Yeah. Playing, I'm, like, listening to the piano or upset. playing games or whatever. Like, they're not sitting there tripping because they're dying. Their brain is sitting there saying, like, look, we're dying, so I'm going to put you somewhere else so you're not going to go through this. That is is a real, like, I, yeah, you know, it could it be the brain trying to prevent, protect you subconsciously, you know? Yeah. It, it's very possible that dementia is somewhat natural. I, uh, psilocybin has been shown to actually fight dementia mm-hmm. in microdosing, and 
And what's really interesting is what what is I think the best example of how it fights depression is it cures end of life depression in cancer patients. Really? Yeah. Is they 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 become accepting of death and like even people that are atheists just you know become completely fine. Yeah. With accepting of the end and and again it when you you look at it like that it's like it is a lot of unnecessary suffering and you know do you want to go into the other you want to die relaxed and peaceful or do you want to be fucking kicking and screaming yeah and who knows i guess it depends on the situation because if someone's trying to kill me like i'm fucking kicking and screaming you know what i mean but if if Fuck that. If I'm old <laughs> and I've chilled for a while and I can't even think anymore and Dude, like I've had some crazy conversations with in nursing homes with people that are basically well they are. They were on their deathbed, you know? Yeah. I've had That's how- I've had men they're sitting there, you know, talking to me man to man like, Dude, I'm ready to die. Yeah. Like, I just wanna die. And I'm like, dude, I'm just here to like fix your sink. Like I, I'm I I'm not I didn't say that of course, but like I'm like, what do I say to this guy? Yeah. Right? Like, what do I fucking say to this guy to make him feel better about, like, his situation right now? And that was always tough, man. No. Because that... for me, you know, you don't always know what a person wants to hear. And especially at that point in their life, like, they might want to hear something. But, like, sometimes not everybody – I'm not religious, so sometimes people no, don't want to hear what, what I have say? to say. Yeah. yeah so. Well, even if you're religious, even if you got like, even if you're gonna sit there and promise somebody that, that something, something like, they're fucking dying. My dad, my dad was dying, and I like, I was changing his IV bags and everything like that. You know, when he, uh, it was he, he had can- uh, colon cancer when he died. Uh, it, it was a lot of like unnecessary suffering in some ways, mm-hmm. and it. It was, it, it's weird, like, because that time was worth it to me, you know, it was the time that I really got to know my father, he didn't like it, but I, I was smoking pot young, and he, you know, smoked pot my whole life, and we smoked pot together, like, even though, he, just because he was dying, Yeah. you know, and, and I really got to know him toward the end, because he worked all the time, and then all of a sudden, he did, couldn't work anymore, and... I don't know like it it's it's crazy it is Mm -hmm. crazy and it's different for everybody my grandma she said she never wanted to shit herself she she basically got that to that point in her life and she died like the next day she's yeah and you know i i see that i see that being fair i think it's different when it's somebody that's young it's different when it's something that's not fucking fair yeah and some not all deaths are equal I, I, how do you feel about the whole assisted suicide thing that's a tough one yeah, i think i think my dad might have it might it it definitely benefit from people i think it's okay i definitely think that it with dementia patients though <laughs> that they shouldn't have the decision made for them you know yeah, what i mean that's a little- yeah. So where do you draw a line at? I would yeah. draw. I would draw the line at being able to give verb your own consent. Yeah. Or maybe ahead of time. Yeah. Like, look, yeah. This is in my will. Yeah. Right. If you put it in your will, yeah. I think it should be an available option. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's look. It, it's my fucking life, bro. Yeah. And and play. it you know it's you and pe- like I saw like one of the things people were saying like how can you be against like suicide and before assisted suicide and the difference is people are dying of things that are incurable and we they're suffering tremendously mm-hmm. you know what i mean if you're dying of bone cancer for fuck's sake the agony that of not being able to fucking move is your body is literally eating itself like you know it, it's just so not fair and we know that they're like people have been assisted so there's been assisted suicide for fucking a long time and whether people knew it or not there's been assisted suicide for a long time like just low key yeah exactly and some doctors know that it's a good thing and it's your it's your life i'm a i'm a firm believer in people know what's good for them like it all right this is not going to be a popular opinion but if i had five employees 
and you know employee a is the best employee that i've ever had and i sit him down and i'm like dude wh how do you do it you know every day you know you come in you kill it wh what do you do and he's like i do cocaine he's like i use cocaine and I, I you know i think it makes me a better employee it helps with whatever the hell goes wrong with my head uh -huh. and i don't really see a problem with that unless he sees a problem with that you know what i mean yeah it, you know and that's that's the thing there should be options for people that want to do it. But if you tell people no, all they're going to do is tell you fuck you. Like, I, you know, I'm never going to rip something out of anybody's hand. But I'm there when they need me. And that's a hard, it's a really hard position to take. Because sometimes you can't help when they, when they might need it. Yeah. But, but I've tried. I've tried to help people. And I wish I knew a like a perfect answer you know it's tough man we all do it, hopefully somebody uh, finds out yeah no i think i think we're on the right track i think we're moving forward with with treatment especially for addiction it it's gonna start with with cannabis and it's gonna work its way into psychedelics and it's gonna work its way into therapy and somewhere on the way we're gonna identify because there's a reason, it, like, addiction and depression and anxiety and all these things are treated by psychedelics. And, like, schizophrenia and bipolar disorder aren't. You know what I mean? Mm. Because those things have a specific trigger in the brain. Yeah. It, it, it's like a pressure point, And we just got to figure it out. But we've been talking for, like, two hours. Sweet. Ooh clock in at 152 i think that was a real good segment hell yeah um anything you want to say to anybody before we wrap this up nothing man just thank you you know thanks for having me man i've been looking forward to this for a while now, thank you for and, coming uh, no this was we can do it again this was very very fun yeah it was cool man i like this a lot uh yeah, yeah. all right and good best of luck to you and best of luck to your plants and grow the, big the ladies the ladies yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Grow for sure. Grow big buds and uh, with high THC percentage. <laughs> That's what it's all about. All right. All right, man. Goodbye, internet. <laughs>